Just that slightly. All right. Let's get the focus again. Thank you. So all from A all the way through up to E, we have this gravitational force that is pulling it down, but there's a ramp in the wave which causes it to accelerate to the right. So it is positive because of that. As it's going up the ramp here, I have two forces trying to pull it back down. The weight of it and the friction force are both trying to stop it from going up the ramp. So it is negative in that region because both forces have that negative component. And then over here in the last, uh, and then as it's going down, yes, there's friction force in the positive direction, but it's still, this is the dominant one, otherwise it wouldn't be sliding down the ramp. Now some of the force references uh, work for some people if you've had physics before. If you haven't had physics before, uh, we'll get to that in much more detail, excruciating detail later. But three ways of looking at it. So if to the right is positive, if I ran into the wall, what would be my acceleration when I hit the wall? Positive, negative, or zero? Negative. Why? Because it's slowing me down. And if it's slowing me down? It would be positive because it's slowing me down. Okay. Why would, why expand on that? I was just looking as a problem that I worked on, I guess, in class. Jacob? Would it be positive because your velocity is negative? Yes, there we go. My, if I'm running towards the wall, my velocity is negative. If I slow down, the acceleration has to be the opposite sign, so it'd be positive. Or, if I run into the wall, the wall is pushing on me in that direction. That's what keeps me from going through the wall. So if the wall is pushing me in that direction, that's the, that's the major force that's keeping me from traveling at a constant velocity. And so, again, that force is in the positive direction, therefore positive acceleration. All right, questions to here. As I run into the wall, if you think about in 151, there's one force that doesn't require contact. All the rest of them do. The one force that doesn't require contact is, is a person's weight or the gravitational force. So that's acting down. Matter of fact, down is defined by the direction of the gravitational pull. So if I run into the wall, I've got a gravitational force acting down. The other two things that are, I'm touching are the wall and the floor. The wall is pushing on me that way, the force pushing up on me. I'm not falling, so the, the force up and the force down are matching each other. So the only, so those would cancel each other out though, because they're vectors and you add them together and you end up with zero. So the only, the net force acting on me is the force from the wall. And the wall is not pulling me, it's pushing me. It, it's going the opposite of the direction that I'm trying to go in this case. And so, since that force is that way, the positive direction, my acceleration is positive. Is that extended enough? Okay. Other uh, questions? All right. I don't know what you're thinking. You went, oh, this is great, but where's the math? Well, let's do it. Should be watching the videos. What are the cake formulas? We'll do it off of memory, be more impressive. Or if you can look and see your notes, we'll go that route. Velocity equals initial velocity. 
plus acceleration over time. Or not over time. Time to time? Yeah, time to time. And you're going for the just the plain old V byte right there? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I tend to put a F there for a final, but it doesn't have to be. V squared equals initial velocity squared plus acceleration, or two A vector symbols, and dot product delta S. Um, displacement. Oh. Equals um, final velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Uh, no, there is a mistake in that. Did I write it down wrong? I, maybe I just misheard. No, that was the. That might be initial velocity and yeah. not final velocity. Placement equals initial velocity plus uh, final velocity divided by two times time. All right. What is for what does K stand? Why do I call them? I'm pretty much the only one that calls them K formulas, or perhaps former students. But what is why K? I'm emphasizing that is these formulas are true if you have constant acceleration. And then kinematic equations for the rest of it. So cake formulas might be redundant. If acceleration is not constant, do not use these. Now, if I've got a constant acceleration segment followed by another constant acceleration segment, well, then I could use it for each segment. Let's just run through some quick examples of actually using them and set up how to actually solve those problems. Uh, one reason, I just want to point out, one reason I did not stop Ethan earlier when he did VFT, I didn't know if you were looking at a different source, there is a fifth equation that some textbooks will have. Uh, I tend not to use it, but there is a VFT minus one half AT squared also. But, uh, you know, that you can do it all from these. If you've had calculus, I think you'll notice that if you took the first derivative of this with respect to time, you would get that equation. If you have not had calculus, then that probably meant nothing to you. So I notice I have five quantities over there. I have displacement, acceleration, uh, let me do it in my traditional order, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. One of the issues that some students in the past have found is not sure which equation to use. There's the scatter uh, approach, and then work it out from there. So let's see. A car starts at 330 meters per second and accelerates plus there uniformly. at negative five meters per second squared for eight seconds. <clears throat> what is the car's displacement?
If I'm given three of these things, I can find the other two. So let's parse out what we have here. What of these quantities here, what am I given? 30 meters per second. Is which quantity? Initial, Initial velocity. velocity. Now I put the plus sign in there to emphasize that it is moving in the positive direction. That that is a velocity, not just a speed. So that is positive 30 meters per second. I should throw in for eight seconds a long, a straight line, one dimensional problem. All right, what else am I given? Acceleration. Which is negative five times. And time. Eight seconds. Which is eight seconds. All right, I've given three things right there on the problem. I can find the other two simply enough. If you're not quite sure which equation to use, well, actually, what are we trying to find here? Displacement. So I want the equation that doesn't have BF in it. The displacement equals velocity initial times time plus one-half acceleration. Now, I recommend that you write the equation down first on some sort of assessment, just so I get an idea of your thinking. Some students prefer a jazz approach and just sort of throw stuff all over the page and I have to sort of figure out the order, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. So we have third, uh, that's in the wrong place. So we have this is equal to 30 times 8 plus 1 half. Negative 5 meters. Now I don't have to keep track of units throughout the equation because I'm already in a standard system. Meters, seconds, kilograms. That, that'll cover most of this course. But once, I, once I've established I'm in a, what's known as the NKS system for meters, kilograms, and seconds, I know what my units, my answer is going to be. Going through the fancy math here, we end up with about where we get 80 meters. The 80 and or the meters, either part of it. The answer is positive, so what does that mean? That you moved in a positive direction. That you moved in a positive direction. Well, it's implied in that, but that's not the explicit thing we're looking for. I know it's moving in a positive direction because my velocity was positive. This is the physics part, really, of trying to figure out what it actually means. All right, so I got a line here. I got I start here, my starting point. What is 80 meters? You moved 80 point. meters positive to the origin. To the starting point. Starting point, displacement. Uh, tell me what you mean by that. As in, if I had, a, if the car had a, could measure increments that far, that the odometer changed 80 meters? Is that what you're saying? Yes. David, did you have any? It is by changing position, so physically, what are we talking about here? Uh, Jacob, your hand was up, and then Luis? I mean, how far you are from the starting point. Okay, then. 80 meters, you rise for the positive direction from the starting point. Yeah, so all it tells us, all that we know is that at the end, 
I am 80 meters from the starting point. It has not told us how far I've actually gone. Because I turn around at some point. How do I know I turned around? Because your acceleration is negative. Which means I'm just slowing down. How do I know, at what point do I turn around? Because it's, it's 30 meters per second. You've only moved 80 meters and for a total of eight seconds. So at some point you had to have turned around because it would have been 240 meters if you were just moving in one direction. Uh, I could still be slowing down and not turn around it, if I had chosen a different acceleration. If I had chosen negative one meter per second squared, I would not have gone the full 240. Well, let's find final velocity. What equation should I use? First. Say the first one? All right, so that would be equal to, so VI plus AT, which is 30 plus negative five times eight. 30 minus 40. Negative 10 units. What does that negative tell us? That you're moving to the towards the starting point. Uh, that in this particular case, that works, but not always. That we're moving in the negative direction. Yeah, just so we're moving in that direction. So that tells us I know I have to turn around. If I'm going in the positive direction at one point and the negative direction at another point, I have to stop if it's a one-dimensional problem. So, so what's happening here? I think that would have its biggest stunning effect. All right, so I go past this point, and then I'm coming back, and then the problem ends there. So, the, so my next question is, how far did I actually go? What was the distance traveled? Here's an example where the distance is not the magnitude of the displacement, because I've traveled in more than one direction. So I need to figure out how far do I go out before I stop? So how do I figure out how much time it took to stop? So, so let's, I don't know time now. And I had the, in my hand, and I put it down, who knows where. Three. So in this problem, I can't use all the information because I'm going to stop somewhere before the eight seconds is up, so I don't know time. My initial velocity and acceleration are the same, so let's write down my, the big five. The I, the F, A, and T. And so, let's see, this is still negative five meters per second squared, which tells me that my velocity changes. Negative five meters per second every second. Uh, this is positive 30 meters per second. VF is negative 10 meters per second. Now that's for the full eight seconds. The question is that what, how much time is it before I stop and turn around? So what is the final velocity? What we're trying to do now is find the time to stop or to turn around, whichever way you want to look at it. So which equation? The first one. Yeah. So I have zero is equal to 30 plus negative five T, however you want to do it. T ends up being 30 over five. Six. Seconds. So for six seconds, so from here to here in six seconds, so this is six seconds. So zero seconds, six seconds, eight seconds. So starting here, I'm going 30 meters per second in the positive direction. There I'm at rest, 
zero meters per second, and here I'm at negative 10 meters per second. How far do I travel to the right? In that first six seconds, how far do I go? I heard 60 and I heard 108 meters. Uh, neither? How would you figure it out? The last equation. Big sick? The last equation. Yeah. What's my average velocity? This right here is just average velocity. Which, that's the formula if acceleration is constant. Uh, what's my average velocity? You go from 30 meters per second to zero meters per second. What's the average? 15 meters per second. Yeah, 15. That this is averaging the first and the last one. So my average, 15 meters per second. So on average, I'm traveling 15 meters per second for those six seconds. How far do I go? Yeah. So I'm using the last equation to scale a bit, recommended. So I go 90 meters. I end up 80 meters from where I began. So how far do I travel back? So what is the distance I traveled? So the distance I traveled is 100 meters. So I just sort of throw off into the side over here, delta x equals 100 meters. Questions to here? So if it took us six seconds to get to 90 meters, wait, yeah, okay, and then our Velocity changes to negative 10 meters per second. Two seconds later. Two seconds later. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other way of looking at that 10 is I go from 0.